Hi guys, Squirrel Shop here. Uh, today we are doing a fork refresh on a 2014 CBR 600 RR. Um, this is the Big Bang Shawa forks and um, there's some specialized tools you're going to really have to have. Don't skimp on this. Don't try to cheat this. They're not overly expensive. Um, but uh, yeah, these are a little bit less user friendly than the old style, but they're a better fork. Um, so let's get into it. Uh, first thing you're going to need is the Motion Pro fork cap tool. It's an eight-sided tool. I don't remember exactly what this cost. I've had it for years now, but I want to say around $25. You're also going to need um, the Race Tech Big Bang Inner um, Insert. I can't remember the exact term for this, but uh, it's for the, I think it's a 12-sided inside um, fork tube. Uh, I'm, I'm blanking, but it, it looks like this. Um, part of the Big Bang Piston Kit. Um, I'm blanking on the name for it, uh, but if you can see it, there's the model name. TFCH06 by Racetech. I want to say this is about $65, but you have to have this part. There's really no other way around it. Um, so let's get into it again don't try to cheat no uh, adjustable wrenches on this or anything like that don't, don't get silly guys so first thing we're going to do is pop this loose okay now we're going to slide this fork tube down let me loosen up my jaws here Okay, that's going to expose this. So now we have a 17 and a 19 up here. I don't actually have a 19 for some reason, or I can't find it. Um, I use these Nipex Smooth Jaw. This does not qualify, in my opinion, as an adjustable wrench because it doesn't create the mistakes that an adjustable wrench does. So all I'm going to do is break this loose. I'm going to try to break the top loose, not the bottom because this actually can change your compression and rebound um, settings. So I'm gonna break this loose. This is an important part. Um, yeah, you don't wanna unspin this too much. You're gonna spin the top cap, not the nut. If you know what you're doing with forks, yeah, you can reset everything via here, but you need to be very careful because you can get yourself in trouble really quick if you unspin this. You'll change all your settings and nothing will fit. Um, I mean, it'll all fit together, but none of your settings will actually be what they should be factory. So be aware of that unless you are intricately knowledgeable about forks. And if you are, you're not watching my video. Um, so now we're ready for this. It's gonna fit in there real tight so I have this rod down here through the back of my stand you're gonna need some way to hold the lower fork shoe stable while you do take this. a uh, number five millimeter um, um, Allen and we're gonna back out all of the preload here this is gonna make our job up top easier. Okay, that's all the preload backed out. It's in there tight, but we're loose now. And beware, this will be under tension when I let it loose. Um, not under a ton, but enough. Okay, now we're ready to drain and catch the fluids. This one was leaking real bad, so it's going to be 
really low on fluid. We'll let that drain for a while. Show you how to do that. So I like to use, this is really just like a cheap little body bar, um, but it's scratch free. Um, you can use a flat blade for this, but you're likely to scratch, damage your forks to some extent. Not only am I doing this for other people, but I'm OCD. I don't like scratching things when it's unnecessary. So we're just going to work this seal up. There it is. We're going to get our pick. We're going to get in here to the opening and pull our retaining ring. Be careful when you do this that you don't scratch up your fork tube. I'm going to bring it all the way to the top, spread it, pull it open. And then we will basically use this lower fork tube as a slide hammer. Okay. Now, we're going to use a scratch free pry bar again to pry open the bushing and pass it off. These are pretty stiff. goes and the second one and this you got to pay attention to what direction this comes off we'll go to we'll go over this later but this is um, a single directional washer and it matters it's round on one side and it's flat on the other so we'll lay all this up here and we're gonna clean and assemble while that one drains okay these upper tubes have already been cleaned and drained completely so we will clean out these lower parts here and we'll reassemble. You can use a brake cleaner or soap and water. With the brake cleaner you need to be aware of keeping it off of rubber o-rings. Soap and water you need to give a lot of time to dry. Okay, now we're ready to reassemble the outer and inner fork piston. Um, here's the Honda OEM part number. My experience, though there are absolutely lesser and better quality seals, is that the majority of the difference in seal longevity is how they're installed. So, first, I'm going to put a layer of tape over these breather holes. This reduces, maybe even completely mitigates the possibility of scratching. Those holes are fairly smooth, but I don't want to risk it. Then I'm going to use Motion Pro's Fork Seal Bullet Set. Probably the green. Yep, actually it's one smaller. It'll be the blue probably in this case. Yep. 
This isn't necessary, but you can use electrical tape or a small baggie over the top. The, the, the point is that you want to cover all of these harsh machined edges. That is extremely important. Now I'm going to put a very light layer of axle grease. Well, any kind of, it's actually wheel bearing grease. Um, on the outer and inner edges of this very very thin layer. This is just to aid uh, In putting it on it's not just so that it's easier for me It's because when it slides on it's less likely less likely to catch and snag and therefore rip or damage part of the seal So uh, seal wipe or uh, dust seal as some call it goes on first slide that all the way down then the seal itself you can see there's an inner spring and kind of an outer spring this small spring to the front of the seal is going to go toward the fork boot okay I mentioned this washer is directional there's a rounded side and a square side the rounded side goes toward the seal. I have to pull this boot off. We're no longer in any danger of snagging anything because the seals are on, so I'll pull this tape back off. Do a quick wipe again. Cleanliness is also super important here. Okay, now put the bushings back on. Larger bushing first. This small tight guy. We're gonna spread him open. Clip it in place. You want to inspect your bushings really every time, but especially when you start getting up in higher mileage. Inspect your bushings. Make sure that uh, make sure that they don't have a lot of wear and discoloration. Okay, bring this over here. I'll put a wood block under it. Push this down. Use my um, driver standoff. And fork seal driver. Spin, dry, spin, dry. See that went on pretty easy. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Now the retainer ring. Again, starting from the top, make sure we don't touch and scratch. Press in. Bring this down, press it firmly in place, clean up. Okay, now we're going to fully compress it, put it back in the machine. Now it's time for oil. Okay. Now it's back in my fork vise and we are ready to reassemble and refill. So the Big Bang forks are a little bit different in this next step than some of the older models in that the fork oil level is measured after the spring is inserted, the spring assembly. So we're gonna drop this in cleaned our spring, going to drop it in, and going to drop this last piece in as well. Now I'm using a 7.5 weight simply because that's what I like. Fork oil is a little bit user specific, but that comes from um, comes from quite a bit of 
uh, knowledge. So you want to check and see what they recommend, what weight they recommend for yours and specific to the brand. I'm going to pump this, make sure that I filled in all the gaps between the two forks. let that sit a little while make sure that all the air has bled off of it okay now my motion pro fork oil gauge set to 125 millimeters we're going to pull off the excess oil here okay that's the correct oil level Drop him in. And press down. No need for the press part of my jig here. These big bang forks are under a lot less pressure initially. So I'll tighten this by hand until it stops. Now the fork cap. Again, making sure we don't move the nut. Raise this. Okay, I need to go clean this fork up and set all the settings, but that is a complete rebuild of a 2014 um, Big Bang Shawa fork for a CBR 600RR. We'll catch you on the next one.